Hey everybody, Coach MJ here with tonight's episode of Try Right Coaching Live. Tonight we're going to talk about periodization. And if you're wondering what periodization is, or maybe you've heard this term, this buzzword thrown around, it's really very simple. Don't let it, don't let it stress you out. Periodization is basically just a a, a training style, a training system, a, a, a plan. It's not a plan itself, but it's a, a style of a plan. Um, and how you use it can me help you have your greatest season ever. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Marcin. and Marcin, and I saw your wife yesterday at the store. We talked about you coming back to CT. Anyway, um, so what exactly it is, It periodization basically will help you... Um, Divide the year into different seasons, different parts of the year where you'll be training differently based on where you are in relation to your A race. Uh, hey, Chris. Hey, Carrie. Carrie, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time on here. So before periodization, people just basically did the same kind of workouts all year round. Um, and it's very easy to, number one, get bored, number two, sort of plateau after a while. Um, and so there was there were some studies done and periodization is pretty popular. There's also another way, it's reverse periodization, which I don't even wanna to cover tonight because this can be a little dry, okay? Um, hey, Candace. Candace, we should have had you at the uh, swim clinic today. Hey, Jim. Oh, good, Carrie. Awesome. Glad to hear you're doing well. All right. So what you need to do is divide your year into um, phases, okay? Different phases. And so you always want to start with the end in mind. And I've, I've talked about this before. When I start to write any training program for any athlete, what I have to look, look at is the A race or races. Now, it is impossible for you to race at your best. Can you hear that puppy barking? He's not happy with me right now. Uh, you, you can't, you, you're not going to be able to race at your A game for an entire year, not even for months uh, at the same time. You need to be able to taper, peak, race, relax, recover, and then you, you can, you know, and within one season, you can do that a couple times, but you, you're never, no one can be at the same or should train at the same level and the same pace and the same intensity and the same duration throughout the year. Think about it. For those of you that have done like marathon training, you're really going to be running all those miles all year round? No. A lot of you at, right after your marathon will take some time off running. And then when you come back, you come back easy, light. That's how you have to do it if you want to truly reach your potential. Um, no, that puppy. Mm. Oh, you did, Candace? Oh, we'll have to talk. Yeah, the other puppy. So anyway, all right. So real quick, if you want, okay, there's two things I'm doing. Um, number one, I'm going to give away this journal because if you want to write out your training plan, if you want to try and use periodization to develop a plan for you for the season, you need to map it out. I always like to do my stuff handwritten because it sinks in a little bit more. So I do have a journal I'm giving away. All you have to do is type in the comments, you're a race this season, and you could be entered in the raffle for the journal. And then I have this information kind of divided out in a, in a better, a more, um, I guess more in depth schedule. If you want to get a copy of that, I'm happy to email it to you. You just have to go to trywritecoaching.com slash bonus. Lisa, can you type that in the comments? I didn't write it up here today. Um, Hey, Anita, thanks for hop hopping in. Okay. So again, if you want the journal, all you have to do is type in um, what your A race is this, this year for the comments in the comments. And then if you want to get an in-depth version of kind of how this works, uh, then just go to trywritecoaching.com slash bonus. You'll get on the email list. I'm going to email that out. Okay. All right. So here are the four phases that you want to divide your season in. And again, how do you figure out what this is? Well, it really depends. There's a couple, there's a lot of things it depends on. This is just guidelines, you guys. You start with your A race. So let's just say that your A race is, I don't know, Chicago triathlon, right? It's end of August. And you are a newer triathlete. Um, 
you 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 you've done a few tries. You've been doing it a year or two, but you know you're still very early on in your triathlon career. You need to go kind of to the longer side of these these ranges. Someone who's been say racing for years can go on the lighter side when doing a sprint or Olympic. But if you're going to do an Ironman, then you got to go again to the higher side. Again, there's no exact black and white answer for anybody. So that's why you get a coach because a coach can kind of help you figure out what, what it is that you need to do. But the prep phase. So the prep phase, again, generally four to eight weeks. Again, that's a big span, right? This is for, okay, so... That's generally dependent dependent on where you are and when your your A race is. Someone who's got to start to get ready to start training, right? So some of us who say have not been training for a while, like you can still have been working out, but you haven't put any structure to any training. You haven't really uh, worked out with a purpose, with a focus. Okay, so there's a there's a prep phase in there. And the prep phase is aerobic activities. So. That could be running, that could be rowing, it could be biking, it could be skiing, it could be uh, um, obviously swimming. Any of your, any of your, it's all aerobic, all, all cardiovascular stuff. You've got to get your, the blood moving. You've got to get that aerobic endurance up. So you have to. This is what you have to start somewhere. Some athletes who kind of, I don't want to say they train all year round, but they work out all year round. Prep phase can be pretty short. Okay, because they've already got that. They've already got that going. Their, their cardiovascular system is developed already and they're in shape. Hey, Jason. Oh, thank you, Lisa. The second part is the base phase. Now, the base phase, you're going to increase aerobic capacity. So let's just say you've been running and you're, you know, you do your few miles here and there. Maybe you do a long run, four or five, maybe even six miles. Well, now we want to increase the, the capacity. Maybe we want to go a little bit longer. Maybe we want to work on keeping that heart rate a little more steady. Things start to come in a little bit more into focus in the base phase. We really start trying to target uh, any weak areas that, that the athlete might have so we can start um, bringing those, the weaknesses up to speed with the other disciplines of the event. Now, this doesn't apply just to triathlon or just to running. This applies to all sports, you guys, all of them. All right. So in your base phase, you're going to do some, some like medium length workouts, not your really short stuff. So like your prep phase, you might be just doing like a 20 minute run or 30 minute run in your base phase. It starts to get a little bit longer. All right. Hey, Lisa, this one, what? You forgot the G in there. <laughs> um, okay. And then, so after your base phase, you're going to go to the build phase. The build phase is, base phase is, is the longest part, right? Obviously, you want to, especially, it's, again, it depends on what you're doing and where you're at and how long you've been racing and how in shape you are when you start, when you consider starting a prep phase or a base phase. But that's when you're really going to start to get this long stuff in. So then the build phase is where you're really going to start to increase efficiency, okay? So... I talk about this a lot when we do comfy trainer class. So you let's just say you do an FTP test. FTP is functional threshold power. It's the max power you can hold for, well, we test it for 20 minutes, but we calculate it out so that it's what you can do for, say, 40 minutes, all right, or an hour. What you want to do is, the, the, it's great. You can get a high FTP number. That's all fine and good. But what you have to do is really get good at, Riding at a certain percentage of that FTP. So let's just say you're training for a half Ironman. Okay, so half Ironman bike ride is 56 miles. For most people, that's between two hours and 30 minutes and three hours and 30 minutes. Okay, so you're not riding at your FTP for that. No, if you can only hold that number for 40 minutes or an hour, you can't hold that number for two hours, two and a half, or three and a half hours, right? So you go at a percentage of it for a half Ironman, 80 to 85% is what I would recommend where you should be able to hold that FTP for the duration of that bike ride and still be able to run efficiently after that ride. So what do we do? We start in that build, we start making you do those rides at that exact 
threshold at, or at that exact percentage of your threshold because you want to get really good at it. You want it to not feel so intense, so hard. So when you first start and you're in your prep phase or your base phase, you, you'll get out and you'll start doing that ride and hitting that percentage and be going, oh my gosh, this is so hard and I'm breathing heavy and I'm sweating. And I'm... Once you start getting closer to the build phase, that should be easy. I shouldn't say easy. That should be tolerable. It's, you know, it should be comfortable. It should be something that you're used to, something that you can do, something that you're ready. You've got your mind wrapped around it. You're efficient at it. You're keeping that heart rate in a nice steady zone. You don't have spikes all over the place or it doesn't spike up and stay up there. You get efficient at that. Um, what I would say about this though, it, um, is efficiency in the swim needs to be done before that. I mean, because it takes a long time to be efficient in the swim, but if you know, based on where you are, because when you are only four to eight weeks before your race, you're not going to change much. You're not going to change much. You're not going to improve that much more. You're not going to decrease that much more. So what you have to do is work with what you have as far as, as efficiency in the swim and then get, get efficient at what you can do or at, at that level. Okay. So, um, it's hard to explain, but um, the time to work on your swim, which we just did a swim analysis tonight, the time to work on your swim stroke is now. It was uh, December, January, February, March. We're even kind of the late side. But after now, we're not doing any more clinics because you really, technique is, takes a while to get. And you're probably not going to pick it up by May or June now, right? It's just not enough time. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Aunt Rogue. Okay, so improve efficiency. Then you have your peak or race phase. And notice, you guys, the peak or race is only three to five weeks. So you may be able to get a couple of races in there. If they're, if they're short races, you could probably race a couple times and be at your peak. But once you hit, once you hit there, then you have to, I don't want to say you have to start all over again. You don't have to go back to base, uh, prep phase. But um, when you do peak phase, you decrease duration, increase intensity. So you want your workouts. This is, this is what you call taper, right? Okay. So for those of you that have done marathons or long races, even if you do short races, you taper, okay? So whereas your long run might have been five or six miles, in the couple weeks before your race, you're not running five or six miles, you, you break that off, okay? The other thing that I didn't write on here is it really goes in a three week cycle. Build, build, step back, build, build, step back. So it's up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, all right? And it's a gradual kind of climb. One thing I'll see, I see a lot of people do is they just keep going up and up and up and up and they don't ever take that step back week or they try to increase it too fast. Okay. So if your long run is three miles this week, you don't want to jump to five and then seven and then 13 and you don't, you have to go up, you have to give your body a break. Okay. You have to step back. That, that's through the whole thing. That's through the whole thing. Um, but especially in the in the peak and race phase, we want to go a little bit faster, but decrease um, the volume. The volume is going to come down. So, hey, Katie, thanks for watching. All right, last time, guys, because I really have to go pay attention to this puppy. If you want to win this journal, I, I like to, I know computers, technology, all that, and you got the apps to do your training plans and stuff like that. But I still like to write stuff down. Helps me memorize it, but I also, I just, I like it. I like to be able to physically write into a journal. But I am giving away this um, journal. All you have to do is type in your A race for the season. I just want to know what everybody's A race is. Uh, and I'm going to raffle that off for one to one lucky winner. And then if you want this extrapolated out into a little bit more detail, I have a nice little chart. Um, just go to trywritecoaching.com slash bonus um, and enter your email in there. You get on the email list, you'll get more detail on this because it's just too much to write out. But as with anything, you guys, there's no one right answer. Okay. The, the, the point of periodization, what I really want you to get your head around is that you don't do the same thing all year. You've got to mix it up. You've got to mix it up in terms of the workouts, in terms of not just the activity itself, but the intensity, 
the duration, um, um, the frequency. You gotta, you gotta change all those things. If you want to be able to get to a true peak, you can do the same thing all year round and kind of go a little bit higher, lower. You could do that. Um, it's not gonna give you your, your best result though. Extrapolate. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Extrapolate. Uh, <laughs> it's just expand, like, you know, like, anyway. All right, you guys, I know that was quick. Iron Man Canada, awesome, Chris. You're all digital. See, yeah, I know a lot of people are digital, but I like to write it down. I really have always written it down. I love to look at it. Um, hey, Catherine. Oh, that sounds awesome. Awesome, awesome. So, all right, questions, you guys, before I hop off? Again, there's a lot more detail to this, but I don't want to bore you. It is a little, I don't, in my opinion, it's a little dry. I mean, I, I use it. Uh, I, it's worked for me. Um, hey, Eric. <laughs> hey, Eric, thanks for hopping on. But here's the thing. I want you guys to have a system. Please don't go into your training blind uh, like I think I did the first year or two when I first started training. I just kind of like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to go. I, my, my my first triathlon was, um, well, it was Galena. Uh, so it's like a 16 or 17 mile bike ride. And it was hilly, but I, no one told me it was hilly. And uh, I would go out and be like, oh, I'm just going to ride mm, like 10 miles today. That was my long ride. I rode twice a week. I thought that was going to be good enough. And it was terrible. I didn't do well. I mean, I finished it. It was my first one. And I finished it. But I could have done so much better had I actually had a plan, had actually figured something out. Um, and again, these are kind of just guidelines. This doesn't apply to everybody. It, dep it depends on your goals, your fitness level, your experience level, um, your background, your strengths and weaknesses. What are you really good at? What are you not good at? What kind of time do you have to dedicate to your training? All these things are important and, and they all come together as one. We have, as people have so many other factors that come into just to, to, to being able to, to achieve our full potential other than just, hey, slapping a training program down and just do it. You know, there's a lot of other things to, to consider. Hey, Lara. Awesome, awesome. You're doing Chicago Marathon? Really? All right. I think we're volunteering there again. I think. All right, you guys. Thanks for hopping in. I'm going to rescue that little puppy um, from his crate. And uh, I forgot again what next week. But last time, if you want to win the journal, just type in what your A race is for the season. And if you want more detail on all this, because I don't want to go through it all tonight, I've got a nice little chart. It'll help you with a little bit more on frequency, duration, um, the volume that you want to do. Uh, so it, it's, it's got just a nice little chart that, that you can use. And all you have to do to get that is go to tryrightcoaching.com slash bonus, and I will send that out to you. All right? Thank you guys for um, hopping in. I appreciate you spending a little bit of your Sunday night with me as always. And I'll see you right here next week, Sunday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, for another really cool topic, training topic. All right? Thanks so much, guys. Have a great week, and I'll see you next week. All right, bye.